Moving on then, let's get to the list of stocks that are likely to be buzzing on account of news flow as well and Rhea is standing by with just that list. Rhea. Yes, good morning. So let's take a look at all the stocks that are going to be in focus today. First up, we have Bharat Electronics for which the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has approved the inspection of BEL uh, IAI Aerosystems Private Limited, which is a joint venture company between Bharat Electronics and Israel Aerospace Industries Limited. Now, this company is going to provide support including repair and maintenance and other related activities for the medium range surface to air missile systems that are going to be deployed uh, and used in India. We also have Tata Motors in focus since they have conducted the groundbreaking ceremony of uh, the new vehicle manufacturing facility in Tamil Nadu. Now, this facility is going to manufacture cars and SUVs which will cater to the requirements of both Indian and international markets as well. Now, uh, Tata Motors Group is uh, going to invest uh, rupees 9,000 crores in this greenfield manufacturing facility which has been designed for an annual production capacity of over 250,000 vehicles. Now, this production will begin in a phased manner and will progressively increase to reach this peak capacity over the next five to seven years and this plant is is also going to use 100% renewable power and is uh, it's expected to create 5,000 employment uh, opportunities going forward. So definitely keeping an eye out on Tata Motors on that front. We also have a whole host of pharma stocks in focus today. First up is Lupin. Now the US FDA has inspected Lupin's Pithamper uh, Unit 1 for the API and finished product manufacturing facility from the 16th of September to the 27th of September and they closed this inspection with three observations each on the API and the finished product side. We also have Zydus Life in uh, focus since they have received the final approval for uh, from the US FDA for the enzalutamide uh, capsules for the 40 mg uh, capsules and uh, the, uh, these capsules had an annual sales of uh, 869.4 million dollars in the United States last year. We also have Piramal Pharma in focus since the US FDA has issued an EIR for the manufacturing facility located at Ahmedabad and on the 12th of July the UN, US FDA had inspected the facility and had issued form 483 with zero observations and a no action indicator designation. Lastly we have Alembic Pharma in focus which has also received an EIR for its uh, oral solid formulation facility and this inspection was carried out between the 17th and the 26th of July and with this for all of its US FDA facilities the EIRs are now in place for Alembic Pharma, so we're definitely keeping an eye out on all of these stocks today. Thanks very much, uh, Ria, for all the updates. Uh, well, moving on, uh, let's get you the key brokerage notes also. Jine is joining in. Uh, Jine, uh, over to you. Uh, well, yes, first up, we have uh, Morgan Stanley on the painting stocks. We'll talk about Asian paints. They have maintained the underweight rating with the target price of 2,522. Uh, what they believe is that lower commodity costs will benefit the company and they have raised uh, the earnings by 4% expectations and they are also, uh, have also raised the EBITDA margins expectations. Uh, now they are assuming a 19% EBITDA margins uh, compared to 18.4% earlier. For Virgil paints, they are maintaining underweight uh, rating with target price of 497. Uh, what they believe is that uh, the earnings uh, could be higher by 7% and EBITDA margins assumptions have been uh, raised to 16.2% from, uh, from earlier expectation of 15.5%. Moving on, Indescent Bank will be in focus as Goldman Sachs have uh, given buy rating with a target price of 16.35. Now what they believe is the board has uh, reappointed MD and CEO, uh, though the RBI uh, approval is still awaiting but what they believe is that this development uh, removes the near term hang uh, of the management changes which the company had also uh, the bank is better uh, positioned overall uh, according to their margins uh, management and they believe that the stock is trading uh, currently at a deep uh, uh, discount to their 10 year valuations giving positive for indecent bank and lastly zomato will be in focus as clsa have maintained out performance rating with the target price of about 284 what they believe is that uh, zomato gained in matrix over swiggy both in fi24 and in q1 of fi25 as well also, the QSR are losing the market share to aggregators. They believe that the Swiggy uh, will be well positioned once it's fulfilled its uh, funding gap. For now, Zomato remains their topic. So, for that update coming in, but let's also shift the focus to management meets now because McQuarrie has come out with a note of highlights coming in from the management meets of Sinjin and Biocon. Firstly, let's take a look at Sinjin first. And when you take a look at what they had to say, they are highlighting the management expecting strong recovery in the second half of financial year 25. And in terms of the research to manufacturing ratio, they're penciling that in at 50 50. That is the kind of aspiration that they're highlighting when it comes to Sinjin. And in terms of what else, they're highlighting in terms of the timeline largely, they're 
penciling in planned completion of major infrastructure projects by financial year 26 and by financial year 26 they're also expecting to triple bio manufacturing capacity as well so that is something important that they're penciling in in terms of the outsourcing trends then when you take a look at what Macquarie had to say they're highlighting how the outsourcing trends are favoring India versus China and that is also something that they're highlighting next let's also take a look at what they had to say about biocon then because it's the Viatris acquisition that they're seeing as a key re-rating trigger for biosimilars as well. In terms of their growth, they're seeing accelerated growth coming in from the second quarter of financial year 25 onwards as well. And the introduction of new products in generics division is also something that they're highlighting. And in terms of the expectations as well, they're also talking about how the company is aiming to reduce net debt to EBITDA to less than one in the medium term. And that is also an important trigger that they've highlighted when it comes to Biocon as well. There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits and then break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to rise.